So the reason this is called deja vu all over again is this is the second cold molded sloop I've done called Anna. So for somebody who's not super well organized, this has been a challenge. And, uh, and it just seemed like, what, what were the odds of that? Um, but uh, Anna was designed by Bob Stevens, Paul Waring, Stevens and Waring Yacht Design. Um, it was built at the yard here by the Norse in Thomaston, Maine, up the St. George's River. And I'm just going to try and go through a little bit of, well, I'm going to do process, and I'm also going to talk about all of the different aspects of Lyman Morse that uh, were utilized in this build. She was built in that last bay there um, and launched in the Tokyo Traveler there. So this is the, this is probably close to the final GA. We went through a couple different iterations including making her a much bigger boat with an aft owner's stateroom at 85 feet. But ended up here, this is a Spirit of Tradition yacht, which probably you all know, but it's a modern underbody, modern rig, um, but a traditional boat. Um, this is what I would ask every client to do, if they could possibly do it, is build a mock-up. It's uh, worth every penny. The owners walk onto the mock-up, they walk through the boat, they kind of try and experience the spaces, and I drew, I drew all the joinery on the cardboard or plywood, whatever it was, even light fixtures. Um, at the same time, we had to do a panel. We had to develop the panel, develop the cutters for the uh, styles of rails and the <coughs> panel, because we actually had one bulkhead that had to be built quite early. So he's building the um, what is going to become this mock-up, so that at the same time, they could, they could actually walk through the mock-up, we had one piece of joinery, because that's what had to go into the boat. Um, and if you ever get a chance to go online, it's really fun seeing this boat flipped over, also fun to see the cold molding happen. It's, it's very choreographed, it's really beautiful. So it's a very strong way to build a boat. Um, there's some steel, there's some G10, but for the most part, it's the cold molding that will give it its strength. Um, so about my process, I sketch really fast. So my ability to, once we could go through sort of the GA, is to draw quickly and present concepts to the owners. And then Bob and Paul were constantly and, con and concurrently doing their rhino modeling. Um, this boat was the first time I'd ever done a boat built in modules. So this is on the floor above the floor where, where the hull is. And that gave, that was the advantage to that was that the guys were able to stretch out the sort of space of the boat. So doing a stick built construction, but the companionway is six feet instead of two feet. Um, and here you can see one of the modules going in on the port side. So you've got the guest head, a guest, captain's quarters, the keels on the boat at this point, and the deck is being built over here. And the CNC, the bulkheads were actually a CNC uh, cut, um, but everything else is pretty much stick built and you'll start to see how quickly it came together. Going back into, even though the boat was really coming together, all of these details we continued doing the entire time. So we've got somebody hand carving a hand railing, sorry, this null post, which went through a million iterations. And the owners had a really good sense of proportion and detail. Uh, here's the pilot house all finished. Um, one of the things about working with clients who haven't built a boat before is to kind of get through the idea of what kind of details you can add but also that it has to have a it has to be refined but it also has to take a human body kind of being thrown at it in case you crash you know um, well, what we're talking about here is like I, I love to talk about what kind of woods we'll be using I always start with what's sustainably harvested and Nobody pays any attention to that. And then we'll go into what they really like. Uh, I knew we'd be a combination of teak and paint. Um, so it did end up being a teak boat, primarily for the joinery, a walnut sole. Um, this detail is something I really loved that I saw in Doray, an SNS boat. I also did some work for SNS um, from probably a refit, but this vents the dry locker liquor cabinet above, all the hardware I get to draw. This is the companionway. So this is where it's probably easiest to see how traditional the boat is. Everything, this boat has every system you can think of. But looking at it going down the companionway, you just see 
the skylights. Um, I painted the overhead. I painted the deck beams. I tend to do that. Um, here's the owner's head. And just in terms of drafting, going back again into process, I tend to sketch and then draft. And then Paul of Stevens Waring would do the shop drawings because that would ultimately be what was used for the modules. And this went into the boat pretty much as you see it, apart from the marble and the glass door and fixing the plumbing. Here's the owner's stateroom. Bed, 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 bed. This is, you know, five of 15 iterations. Um, you know, something they sent me that was hand carved that they liked. Um, and there's Josh, who is at one more, who actually ended up building this bed in mahogany. Um, and he's installing it there. There it is finished. You can't really see, but down here at the very bottom is sort of these invisible drawers that um, were made in the same veneer. And the, the slope of the sleigh bed is, is really very furniture-like. It's not something I would typically have put into a boat. And you can see the whole sides here. This is the only place you can see the whole sides of the techniques. So there we are. Um, if you're in that salon, the lovely part is you sit up and your eyes look right out on the horizon. Uh, that's kind of this new sort of style of, that wouldn't have been t typical of a classic yacht. Um, the, the one thing that I should have found from the mock-up was actually the one place you really want to step up onto the boat when you're sailing. There we are sailing the boat, driving the boat, we're racing. Um, that's where you'd want to step up and instead we have cushions going all the way up there, which we, we should have figured out. We also needed another winch. We should figure that out. But, um, and then the only really, the sail changes are really just the headsails that are up there. Um, so thank you so much to Allison Langley. So all her photographs, which made this so much easier. And uh, Bob and Paul um, for having me work with them. And Lyman Morris. Thank you very much.